Hello there. Welcome back to Genesis Custom Savers. If, like me, you saw the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and you have an old T-16 toy sitting around collecting dust, you knew exactly what you wanted to do with it. I uh, weathered up my old T-16 and made an old beat up bag to display it in the shop and I'm going to show you how I did it. All right, I've got my stuff. Of course, I've got the, uh, the prop itself all uh, ready to go. Um, I'm going to be weathering this, um, and I'll get into more detail about that later. Uh, this is the bag that I bought. Uh, so I looked at a lot of reference images, and I was not able to find a bag that looked exactly like the one that we could see in the show. So I decided, um, you know, the one in the show's got a single strap, here instead of these two and it's actually got formed a formed section on the sides um, so rather I'd try to find one that was the right size um, so I took a lot of measurements on my screen and compared the prop and the bag to try to get one that was the right size and the right uh, the right color this is a nice olive green that I'm going to be destroying in order to get uh, and achieve a really worn weathered Jawa abused kind of look um, to both to both props. Um, so I'll go through the steps and really one of the themes that I'm going to be focusing on uh, for this is experimentation. So I'm going to do a lot of things that I'm not going to try off camera first. I'm just going to do them and uh, you're going to learn along with me and we're going to value experimentation and testing to achieve the result that we're looking for. Okay, I got some water, I've got the bag, I got a stick. So I don't want to touch the bleach. I got some bleach. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I haven't done this a lot, so I'm not going to put in a lot of bleach. Just a little bit to start. Less is more. You can always do more later. If I overdo it, you can't go back. Um, and I'm going to want to tell by looking at it how much the bleach is affecting it. So, before I put this in, I'm actually going to kind of soak it. So, now that this is wet, this is going to give me a better frame of reference of uh, how much the bleach is affecting it. So uh, I'm just gonna drop it right in. And I'm gonna use my stick to get it under the water. I'm gonna stir it every once in a while. Um, I'm gonna give it about 20 minutes or so and, uh, and we'll take a look and see what we got. Okay, it's only been about five minutes and I can already tell that the color is uh, quite a bit lighter than it started with. It's interesting, the color is lighter on the bag and not so much on the strap. Um, so it seems like the bleach has affected the strap or less than it's affected the bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this off with water, rinse off all the bleach, let it dry, and then we'll take a, a look and decide if we want to do this again. I'm going to keep my bleach solution standing by in case I want to use it some more. Okay, I went back and I actually uh, bleached it a little bit more. Uh, it's all dried and uh, I'm ready to move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a, a number of different techniques. I'm just going to experiment with ways to to kind of stain and age it with, with different colors and stains and mixes. So what I've got here is a couple of just cheap, I've got a black and a brown, cheap dollar store um, acrylic paint. I've also got this water-based uh, wood stain. Um, and I've got a black and a brown. So uh, probably start with the wood stain. What I'm going to do, if I can get it open, is I'm going to make a, a wash. And a wash is, I probably should have shaken that up a little bit before. Let me shake this up a little bit. This doesn't need to be shaken up much. A wash is just a diluted paint. Diluted meaning that it's mixed with water. Um, so I'm going to mix brown. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try just a tiny little bit of black just to darken this brown, kind of make it, uh, what I'm going for is kind of like an oily, you know, kind of mix there. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water because this is a water-based stain so I can dilute it with water. And uh, I can add more water to dilute it more. I'm just got a, a bit of a brush here. I'm going to just mix it up. And this is very rough work, so I don't need much. And what I'm going to do is test on the bottom of the bag where it's uh, least noticeable. So I'm just going to apply a little bit in there just to see kind of how that looks. And what I'm going to do to take a sponge, I'm going to sop it in with a sponge. Um, I'm going to get a second container here. 
and just some water so I can kind of wash that weathering in a little bit or soak it in a little bit. So I'm going to wet my sponge really good. And now that's going to kind of blend that glob of paint into the bottom. And uh, I'm probably just going to actually dry this with a heat gun uh, or let it dry and then just kind of see what I got. So the trick with this experimenting is to go slow. Um, I could do a whole bunch of test patches all over the bag and then realize, no, I actually didn't like those. I shouldn't have done the whole bag. So I can check this test patch, um, wait till it dries, and then I can decide if I want a thicker stain, a thinner stain, uh, you know, try a different style, maybe try these. Um, try some oils and get a variety, but I definitely want, don't want to do the whole bag over until I've got dialed in what I want. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but I've hit this with a heat gun. If you've got a blow dryer, you can do the same kind of thing if you don't want to wait. Um, so that's dried, mostly, and you can see that it's got a nice, uh, subtle, authentic, uh, authentic looking kind of stain. We don't know what it was that stained it or when or how long it's been like that. Um, but basically I want a variety of this type of blotchiness all over the bag. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, that's kind of like looks a little bit on the black side. So I'm going to mix some more brown into my wash and then I'm going to try a second test patch on the bottom um, just to see if I can get more of a browny kind of stain. All right, that's my, uh, that's my second test, a little bit, um, a little bit more brown than the previous one over here. And I used less water, so you can see the perimeter, you can see the more clear stain as opposed to a kind of a washed in, blended in stain. Here's an example. I'm gonna do, that's just a, I'm gonna do two stains. One there, and one like that. And I'm gonna use sponge on both, then I'm gonna use it more on this bottom one more water to blend in that bottom one and just a little bit of water on this guy. So that's less water on that one. Okay, it's kind of faint to see, um, but this is the one that I washed out more and this is the one that I washed out less. This is more of a more pronounced stain. You can see the, the, uh, the boundaries of where the, the wash was originally. This one's more blended in to the fabric. So it's nice to have a variety and do things differently. Um, you'll also notice that I'm trying to stay away from the edges of the material. Um, and that is when you're weathering something like this, um, things that get hit and distressed and worn and scraped, there's more scraping that takes place along the edges of anything, whether it's metal, wood, fabric. And so that's going to be a more worn, lighter color around the perimeter. And if there's any dark splotches that remain, they're generally going to be towards the middle of the, of the item. Um, we're less away from any edges. Uh, I might still do some staining on, on the outside, but I'm going to move on to another technique uh, that you may have heard of. Um, you can use household stuff. So I've got some coffee, or leftover coffee from afternoon coffee break, and I'm going to do uh, an, another test patch here. And uh, I'm just going to kind of create kind of like a cup in the fabric. And I'm just going to pour a little bit in there, and I'm going to let that soak. And soak right in. And then I'm going to wash it out a little bit. And that's again going to give me a slightly different color, slightly different effect of stain. Okay, it's all dried out and uh, it's really hard to see. I don't know if you can even see it. It just, it's a slightly different, more than a stain, it's a, just a discoloration, um, which I really like. It's very different than those other stains. So I'm actually going to use the coffee and I'm going to do a couple other discolorations uh, around the garment. Um, but when you're using something from the kitchen, uh, you can use lots of different things, coffee, tea, uh, you could even use something like a soy sauce or something like that. However, you want to make sure two things. One is you got to be sensitive to whatever it smells like. You may not want your prop to smell like soy sauce, depending on what you're using. Didn't like that. Gave me another idea for this one. Um, and this is my third technique I want to try. Uh, this is motor oil that I just I just scraped off the dipstick on my truck just now. I'm going to pick a spot and I'm just going to dump a little bit of this, a couple of drops. Authentic oil stain. Someone suggested oil paints and they found out I was going to be doing this. And uh, I don't have a whole lot around for oil paints. Now I'm not going to really even dilute that. I'm just going to leave that. 
that's the way it's gonna look. That oil probably is gonna soak in a little bit more. While I was uh, getting this bag set up to dry so I could see what I've done, uh, it occurred to me that I had completely neglected the strap. So I'm gonna use a couple of the techniques, but what thing I'm gonna do that I haven't done yet is I'm gonna dilute out my wash even more. So it's not as, uh, not as pronounced, the, the little stain marks. And I'm gonna try, we'll start right on the corner there. See it right where the strap meets the bag. I'm gonna do a nice long stain and then I'm gonna do the same kind of soak it with water. Yeah, it looks really good. It's nice and subtle and darkened. So I'm gonna do some more of the strap. And while I'm doing it, I wanted to uh, point out, for those of you that might not know, um, Bill Duran and Ben Eady, uh, Bill Duran from Punish Props, um, did a really great tutorial on how to weather um, straps for a Ghostbusters proton pack. Um, so I highly recommend, I'll put a link to it in my video, a lot of great simple weathering techniques for, for canvas straps. And uh, I'm gonna be using a lot of the same techniques as we go on the whole bag. So it's a really great tutorial, worth checking out. All right, it's all dried up. As you can see, I've got some really nice uh, discoloration and stain, really subtle. Um, this was the drops of the motor oil, which I really like. Um, it's a little bit different. This kind of looks like stain from dirty water, which essentially it is, it's a water-based stain. So I've actually drained some motor oil out of my uh, lawnmower. And I'm gonna actually try a couple of spots, a little, a little bit bigger, some drips. And I'm gonna smear it in and just see what that does. Thought of this too to show you. Um, I like the stain, but if you think it's a little too dark, um, you can use WD-40 and some paper towel and you just spray WD-40 right on the stain. And this is any kind of oil-based stuff and then just soak it, dab it right out. And uh, that lifts out a lot of the grease, oil, stain. Um, and when the WD-40 dries, which it will, it's, uh, the stain's actually gonna be lighter. Okay, final trick with the, uh, the motor oil is I've found that the rag that I was using for dabbing um, actually is really nice for providing a little bit of dirt. Um, you can even dab it in the motor oil used motor oil. I never knew that was going to be the, the winning trick. And I can, I can dab on, I'm going to soak it in, I can dab on some extra dirt spots. This is great for doing the strap all over. Now, one thing I'm going to do too is where the flap closes, I'm, this is going to be a little cleaner, this is going to be a little dirtier. So do some dirt as if it collected dirt while closed. I'm always thinking of the story of the prop. I want to point out too that uh, the bag's starting to smell uh, not so much like coffee, but definitely like old motor oil, which enhances the realism of the prop. It smells like it's been sitting in a garage somewhere for 10 years. And I want to do a hole kind of towards the corner of the bag as if something was in the bag while it was being moved around and eventually wore a hole through it. I mean, you could put a hole anywhere, but towards a corner seems like the more believable place for me. So I'm going to take this block of wood, just scrap wood, and I'm gonna position it in there so that I can have something to work against. Make my corner there. And then the, the way I've kind of decided to put my hole is um, I'm just gonna do, take a, a knife and I'm gonna basically do an X, maybe a star. So I'm gonna do small cuts that are actually gonna sever all the woven fabric, all the woven threads and things that compose this canvas. And uh, I'm gonna kind of just Go right through with a sharp knife. I'm going to make an X and then I'm just going to cut a couple more and that's going to make a tiny hole. I can already see it. Uh, but that doesn't look like a nice worn hole yet. So what I need to do is to, to kind of separate out those fabrics. I'm just going to take a little screwdriver here and I'm just going to work it just in the corner there. And I'm going to basically, as you can already see, the, the weave of the, the canvas is coming apart. So that's going to create my, my hole. And I really don't want to do much more than that right now um, because I'm going to continue to work on it. Just a small hole. 
Um, just minor, I might do a couple more, um, but for now, I'm just gonna do one. Okay, if you watched that video that, um, that Bill Duran and Ben Eady did about uh, the, the canvas straps for the Ghostbusters pack, um, you'll know that one of the tools they use is a discarded blade, a dull blade from a X-Acto knife, and just, you know, there's just, you can, you can actually dig into the canvas without going through, and then kind of fray it out. Similar thing to what I did to the hole, it's just, it's a, it's a scrape. Worn and old, oh, actually cut right through there. So, there's another example, okay, be careful. So, I sliced my bag. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do the Bob Ross happy little accident. So remember how I said I was gonna go with one hole? I evidently have more than one hole. Now, I want it to kind of appear old and cracked, even though this is kind of fresh, conditioned, leather so even with the bleach and everything and the soakings um, it's really s nice supple leather um, so trying to use alcohol and try to dry this out it just take forever so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some 60 grit sandpaper and the grain of this leather I can see is going both that way so I'm going to do some, some straight line strokes on the leather kind of roughing up the edge and do one of the light, lighter strokes and less of them to start with. And then of course that wears off the, the top darker coating and it shows kind of like the lighter leather underneath. I'm also going to use the sandpaper and kind of scrape off a little bit of these rivets and the metal, not much because that's probably going to drag through the gravel in the back. Um, but you can already see it's getting much more worn and pay extra special attention to the corners. Okay, one of the ways we're going to weather this is we're going to use a belt sander. And uh, fun story, when I was working on Ghostbusters for a couple of days, the, uh, the guy who was responsible for weathering the straps, um, similar to this, that went around the proton packs that you see in the temple scene or slash the, uh, the pit, um, there, there are proton packs mounted on pillars and, uh, and scaffolding, and uh, we used a lot of straps. And so for weathering these straps, a lot of it was done with the belt sander. Poor guy was was trying to mount the straps on a board and, and use the belt sander by hand. And if you've ever used the belt sander, it's going to shoot those things all over the place. He was having a hard time. So I walked over. I said, okay, hey, let's try this. So together we clamped the belt sander down onto a table. And then you could fire up the belt sander and, uh, and run the straps along it. And uh, it saved, it basically saved the film. Sa that's how I saved Ghostbusters. So we're going to fire this up. <laughs> Now, particularly on the edges, you can see that that just creates a really nice effect. So I'm gonna basically do the edges and some of the surfaces of the whole bag, uh, bit by bit on this belt sander. Uh, I probably could even use a more aggressive belt than what I've got on here, um, which save me a lot of time, but this is what I got, and I'm gonna go with it. Okay, go. This is gonna be tricky because really what I'm doing is I'm not making a scale model of a T16. That would use totally different painting techniques. What I'm doing is I'm attempting to make a, a weathered, old, dirty toy. Um, so I wanna weather it and age it so it looks like it's been sitting in the bottom of a Jawa sand crawler for five years next to a droid with oil leaking out of its armpit. You know, that's, that's the story. Um, and I, so I've looked at some pictures from the Obi-Wan series of the T-16, if you'll notice, uh, in the finale, when he gives it to Luke, spoiler alert, um, it's cleaned up. It's nice and clean and pristine looking. But when he gets it from the Jawa Tika, I think it's Tika, um, it's, it's pretty old and grimy looking. And he, you can even see he touches it and then he looks at his hand. And, you know, it's like, it's obviously it's grimy. So we want to simulate some oil. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of things here. I've got some uh, paint thinner. And I've got a shop cloth and I've got some paint thinner on it ready to go. And I've also got a sponge that I'm going to use maybe for some, some texture. And then just a cheap flat black primer um, in my paint booth. So I'm going to get my airflow going a little bit and I'm going to work in front of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a stroke, a couple of strokes across. I'm not going to spray the whole crop. I'm just going to spray a couple of strokes across. And what that's going to give me is just a, a patch of, of grime. And then I'm going to texture it with the sponge. 
So I'll do it on the bottom one just to test. So basically what I want is this. That's it. That's all I want. And then I'm going to just basically just dab that with the sponge to give it a bit of texture. And uh, I might wear that off a little bit when it dries with scotch Bright. But that's all I want. You notice the difference between that one and that one? And I'm not going to do it the same. There, and some, some press with the sponge that gives it some texture. And if it's too much, I can just dab it with the shop cloth and smear it around and crumple that up a bit. And that gives it again a, a bit of a different texture for the grind. And of course, this will work really well until it actually dries. Yeah, it definitely looks more grimy if I dab it with the shop cloth. So I, I'm starting to like that more and more. All right, the last, one of the last things I'm going to do to this is a wash. Now, I've kept the uh, diluted stain that I used, the black-brown stain that I used on the bag, which is over here. Um, and uh, I kind of tweaked it a little bit, added a little bit, changed the consistency um, to make a nice wash. So I'm just going to stir this up. It's fairly thick. And what you want to do with a wash, I'm going to start on the bottom on the less visible parts, then you can kind of refine your technique as you move to the more visible parts. Um, but really, essentially, you just you kind of brush it on all over, and I do it in sections. So I'm going to do, you know, kind of like the wing. I'm going to brush it in, um, and then I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and just kind of dab and wipe it off. And what that does is it, um, it basically collects, and I want to lightly wipe it, collect in the grooves and uh, gives it kind of a darkening effect. All right, really the last thing I'm going to do with this um, toy prop is just to hit it with a scouring pad a little bit. Um, so it basically just knocks back some of the uh, paint that's accumulated on the surface, scuffs it up a little bit, I need to use straight lines, different angles, especially on the edges. And uh, probably can't see the effect on camera because it's pretty subtle. But it's just one more little kind of layer of believability, especially on really dark sections. It's going to make it go a little bit stronger. Just give the impression that it's worn. So uh, that's how I did my project. Of course, there's lots of different ways to uh, beat up a bag. So uh, hopefully this inspires you to uh, take something simple and try to make it really cool and Star Wars-y to elevate your space, space, your, your space, space. You know what I mean. If you like this video and you want to see more content like that, please follow my channel and click that little bell thing so that you get notified whenever I come up with a new video. Thanks again for watching.